Hi, my name's Dan. I hope you're doing well today. I've got seven patterns for you that you can use in your bass lines. Now you can download that backing track that I played over the intro and I recommend you do so. Let's go through the chord progressions. So the first one, C major seven. And this is the pattern I was using. It's just a root, a fifth, a major seventh and an octave. I do recommend that you know the interval structure because then rather than know the note name, you can just move that pattern to another place where it's exactly the same. And in this case, when we go to F major seven, it is exactly the same. You can play it eighth fret A string, first fret E string. Anywhere where you see a major seventh chord, you can play this pattern. Basically, that's the one and four chords if you're in a major key. This is in C major. So you can do this in any key if it's G. And it would be G to C. Okay, back to the key that we're in. After that, we have a few minor chords. We got A minor, A minor seven, D minor seven, E minor seven. They're all the same chords. So when I went to that bit, I was going. And here's the pattern. There's a couple that you can use actually over these chords. So first of all, if you happen to be on the E string, which I was when I'm on fifth fret, 10th and 12th, so that's A minus seven, D minus seven, E minus seven, you can use this. This is just a minor pentatonic scale. That's one octave. And that's just the two notes that extends to, to cover all the strings, okay? Now hiding within this pattern are a load of other patterns actually, one of which is this one. That's your root five flat seven octave. You'd hear the beginning of Billie Jean and countless other bass lines within that pattern. All that these patterns are, are just arrangements of, you know, chord tones and notes from scales, you know? They just fit, okay? So over that, I was kind of doing... I was sort of bringing those notes to life by using 16th notes. Ghost notes, hammer-ons, things like that. But certainly the notes, I was just using these ones. If I'm playing a minor chord, I know those notes work over it. Little sort of Hendrix type thing there I was doing. A hammer on, this is fret. I've moved to the D minor seven now. Same shape though. And at the top, the G string, doing a little from 10 to 12, frets 10 to 12. Hammer on, immediately followed by a pull off. And then plucking the 12th fret of the D string. So you can do a little rake as well with the index or the middle, doesn't matter. And then the same thing. You can keep going actually. Loads of things you can do with this. So there's A minus seven, D minus seven, A minus seven, E minus seven. And that just there. Just couldn't resist extending the pattern a little bit. It's the same notes though. Okay, so all these notes fit. Then I went to F major seven again and introducing you another pattern. What have we done so far? We've done the major seventh pattern. We've done the sort of minor pentatonic pattern. The root five uh, flat seven octave, that's the third pattern. And this one, we've got, and this works on any major chord a major pentatonic scale with this particular pattern. You've got the first three notes, F, G, A. 
as the first major, second major, third. And you've got a perfect fifth and a sixth major sixth. Now you could have done that over the first set of chords as well. And then we're going. You've got that A minor again where you can use. Just, I'm giving you this pattern. It's a lot of notes there. Doesn't mean you have to play all those notes. I was being quite busy in the beginning, but you can just as equally go. I didn't do much. I just hanging around on the root note there. Perhaps at the end, a little flourish with that little pattern. And then we've got this little section here. Five is just like a power chord, which is just a root and a fifth together, like. Something guitarists do a lot and bass players do it too. But here I'm just using a really ultra simple pattern that you can use too. And this works nearly on any chord. It just doesn't work on anything with like a, a flat five or an augmented five, because that's what's called a perfect fifth. So it works on most chords. Okay, so we've got a root, a five, and an octave. And do learn these as patterns. If we're on an A fifth fret of the E string, the fifth is just two frets this way, one string that way. Just never forget that. And the octave is just jump to another string. So there's that on the A, on the G, and on the F. And I was just kind of, uh, sort of um, John Paul Jones-esque, I was thinking there. Yeah, he did a lot of simple notes in the sort of James Jameson style, but add, adding in lots of rhythm makes it sound good. Also, skipping over maybe the fifth going to the octave. I'll reiterate it though. Don't be afraid just to stay on the root and play some cool rhythms. Which brings me to this pattern, which looks a bit scary. All that is, is just the, the minor pentatonic, well, the, the pentatonic in this key, which is C major, A minor, they're both related, okay? And it's just all of the places that those patterns fit. You just need to know these, but it's good to know the makeup of it. You know, you've got a root, major second, major third. It's basically the major scale without the fourth or the seventh. And it's just a brilliant scale. And what I did there was just like sliding in and out of the shapes. And you will see within this shape, you know, that isolated pattern I gave you. And you'll find several patterns within there. I've given, you know, you've got seven shapes in this lesson, but actually there's way more than that. Now these aren't the seven most important patterns or anything like that. There are so many more, but just, you know, seven that I thought I'd do for this lesson and I'll leave you with the seventh now. So this is a really cool one. I happen to use this a lot in bass lines and fills and, and, and it's all about listening to your favorite players and then grabbing anything that you like. So I've list, I've heard, you know, people like Guy Pratt and Tony Levin use this and I just sort of stole it basically. And it's part of my playing now. So here it is. It's a root of five, which we've done. And that note, which is a ninth, that's just the second note up the octave, okay? You can slide to it from the octave, go back or... And that works pretty much over everything, so you know. Particularly sweet sounding interval, you know. Probably best used a little sparingly, I guess, but... Yeah, that's probably too much. You know, you might go. You know, that kind of thing. Go up an octave. I'll just 
zero in on what I'm doing here. So this is the eighth fret of the A string. I'm going, there's loads of ways of doing this, but I'm going first finger, third finger, and then a very quick shift to get my first finger on the octave. Then I'm now in position to really comfortably do the hammer on. I could stay there, do a slide. I can do a little stretch. Lots of ways. That is a little bit of a stretch though, so be careful and do what you can do. So don't forget to download all those seven shapes, download the backing track and just have a little play around with this, okay? This fits very well to a lesson I've done previously about um, the arpeggios and the modes that come from a key. I'll put the link below to that. That's pretty much a must watch to know um, even more patterns and notes that you can play underneath these things. Don't worry if it seems too much. It's like, it's like words, you know, you have, and, and I have a bunch of words that are in our head and we don't think about all the different sentences and conversations we're gonna have. They just happen, don't they, without thinking. This is a little bit like that, except it's fewer notes. It's just not much stuff really. So just take these things slowly. I do recommend watching that previous video, which I will link below about the harmonized scale and the mode and the, and the arpeggio. Don't worry if any of those words are scaring you. It's very easy once you get it. And it's just really about opening up doors to creativity. That's what it does. You must always work on your technique, your timing to be able to take these ideas and actually turn them into proper music. That's how you are going to do it. Okay. So if you have any questions, do let me know. Other, other than that, please do subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to grow it. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.